Hi everyone, welcome back to the evening session of orientation day three. Tonight we have a fun virtual paint night. So make sure you grab some snacks, some supplies, and be sure to take a photo of your final product and hashtag your future starts here on Instagram and Facebook. Good luck. Hi there, I will teach you how to paint this beautiful painting today of a seascape. I call this Memories of Summer. I really enjoy painting this and I know you will too. So to begin, I have everything laid out in a comfortable manner. I have my paints on the side with the list of colors all around. Of course, my sky, my water, my sand, and my grass. I have my paint brushes laid here handy with my water, my paper towel, um, my canvas is ready, and my image to reference. And of course, something to sip in my case, tea. Your case, anything you choose. And there we go. Let the sipping begin. <laughs> and on to the splatting. So the first thing I want to do, I want to start my painting by determining kind of where my line, my sky and things are going to be. So I have this piece of tape and I go about halfway and I go a little bit lower than halfway. I'm just going to tape that there as straight as I can. So halfway and then down some. I will use my large brush here. I'll dab it in some water and blot it off my paper towel. That kind of gets your brushes ready to go. I will then, I have my colors laid out here, but I have some of my paints in my tray here. But you use your, your palette for mixing your colors. So I'm gonna pick up some, pick up a bit of white. Up a bit of white and pick up some blue and I'll sort of work it into my brush over here and then I'm going to start at the beginning and the beginning is right here so I have a lighter blue and a darker blue so I'm going to use a combination of my blues I want my skies to be kind of streaky and fun light areas, dark areas, but when I'm painting a sky, I'm very much brushing back and forth, sort of in that rocking motion. When you first start painting, you want to be sure that you have lots of paint on there. I'm dipping into my white, maybe some of my lighter blue. Brush that in there and kind of blend as I go. Perhaps I'll pick up a little bit of my that's a really dark blue, not to worry. Put some white on your brush and blend it right there on the canvas. You do have to have some stronger and some weaker of your colors there. Got some white and some blues. And blend and sort of crisscross. As we make our way down to the horizon line. very strong not to worry I did that purposefully so that you know you just add some white paint to that now feel free to mix your colors on your palette just here on the side or you can mix them right there on the canvas you want to have lots of paint on there you want to be sure that you're covering the tooth of the canvas you know that grippy bit you may Need to add some extra paint there to make sure everything is covered nicely. These skies are so forgiving and so fun. So you can go have a lot of fun with this. But see how I'm working some of the lighter and the darker areas in there? It just makes for a really interesting sky. We won't work our cloud in there just yet. 
we'll allow it to dry and then we'll add some of our details. Lots of paint on there and I just, if it looks like there's a strong paint line there, just very lightly almost with a tickle, crisscross over top and you're just kind of blending it out. And I haven't made my way down to the tape just yet, but I'll get there. As I go down, as I start, I use a big, full thickness of my brush, but as I get closer to the horizon line, I'm using more of the chisel edge of the brush. I want this to become sort of smaller lines down there so that it gives us the appearance that you're looking into the horizon and it's a little further back. So I will allow this, I just have white here, I'm going to allow this to gradate and get really light as I go down. So I'll take, this is white, so you're not going to see the color on the camera, but I'm going in here with the white and I'm going to take some of this blue and start up here and brush and blend down into that white with my blue. So I'll blend blue down into the white and then pull that white up into the sky as well. Just blending, blending. Up into the sky and then back down into the horizon until you have this beautiful gradual color change. And then the brush strokes are more of a chiseled edge so it is longer. And it's okay if there's little pockets of white back there too. It sort of looks like little clouds just way back there in the distance. So if you have lines that look too strong of a paint line, just very lightly go over it. What happens when you over blend or keep blending over back and forth and back and forth, you'll blend it up to one solid color. So we're trying to blend sort of gently so that we have several different shades and they don't have to be super strong. This blue will really stand out against the rest of the painting as we go. It feels really natural to have a really dark sky, but you can go softer with that. If you want to bring in a little more of the sky, we will. We'll do another little layer of paint over the top of this. This is our underpainting. spots. This is our underpainting. There will be room to develop. We will now do the underpainting of our water area. So we'll give our brush a little rinse in between. Give it a cleaning. Then blot it off your paper towel to make sure it's nice and clean. smell the salt air. I spent a lot of time on the beach this summer. So I thought this very fitting to um, to share this this painting with you. Hmm. So once you have your sky blended out, our underpainting of our sky blended out, we'll do this little underpainting of our ocean here in the background. So the colors we have chosen for that are a little more um, of the aqua color. So aqua will be our blues with a little bit of that bright green mix. So I would like to start with this turquoise. There's this turquoise color here. And I have a dark, a really dark blue here. So I like to kind of marble these two on my brush together. A bit of the turquoise, a bit of the blue. And I'm just going to try to paint a straight line. Follow this line that we created initially with our tape. Again, using that chiseled edge of the brush. And you paint it just slightly up over that paint line that we created for the sky, the horizon line. Because what you do, every time you add a layer, you're tidying up that little edge. So let's see if we can pull this across here and paint as straight as we can. You can press a little more heavily with your brush. Just 
back and forth. So these, this ocean will reload and just essentially paint lines, probably about to there, just a thin little ocean line back there. So we have some of our dark blue, we have some of that turquoise, and I'm letting it marble here on my brush. And again, this time I started this way from left to right. Now, perhaps this time I'll pull it from right to left just to change up that brush stroke a little bit. When you're painting as well, you don't want each and every brush stroke to be exactly the same. You want to have some exciting qualities to it. And I'm just kind of blending it out back and forth, working it into the canvas there. And again, if I blend it up too much, I'll create one solid color. And that's not what I'm looking for. I'm just looking to kind of blend it to soften it a little bit. So we'll do the same. We'll add some of this aqua. Perhaps this time we'll add a little bit of white as well to this marble bit. So I have some aqua and some whiteness and that blue all right there in my brush. So what this does is it allows me to create a brand new color here. If you over mix it on your palette, then you just get one solid color. And the idea is to have three of these color blend together and create something really interesting here on the canvas. So here we go. Each time you load up, you go slightly below and sort of overlapping. Oh, and you do need paint on your brush. I didn't have very much paint on my brush this time. So when I'm loading my brush, I want more of my lighter colors than my darker colors. So for example, I um, applied some white and some of the light turquoise in my brush and a tiny bit of the dark blue. The darker colors will take over. So when you're loading up your brush, be gentle with your dark colors. Approach them cautiously. We'll go back and forth. If you could see the canvas through, that means that you need more paint. It also may mean that you may have to dip your brush a little tiny bit in the water. You don't want it dripping. You will just gently blot it out and then reload your brush. What this does is it um, makes your paint go on a little more smoothly. There we go. Just reload this up in a white, some aqua and that blue. And there's a little bit of water in this brush now this time you will feel the difference it's not pulling against the canvas now it's just application is so much nicer there we go so see these little lines that i'm creating here so i'm not painting up and down just back and forth using that chiseled edge of my brush and you just want to create contrast so whether you pick up some blue that's contrast or you pick up some of that aqua Whatever you need. And then sort of blend it together. It will look like ripples and waves of water. And you don't have to cover it entirely. If some of the white is coming through there in that little bit of uh, ocean area, it's okay. So we'll just cover that over very nicely. Depending on how much water you put in there will determine how much beach you will have a little later. So I'm just going to soften that out so it's not like a hard paint edge. And what I mean by that, just watch this, just kind of clean up my brush right there along that line, clean up my brush right on the canvas. That way I'm doing two things. I'm softening out that little line, but I'm also allowing the color to almost disappear onto the canvas and look then it looks a little more natural sort of like a shoreline there we go this is coming together rather nicely so just back and forth so when we're doing these paintings we have to start at the top and overlap and work our way forward you don't really go back into it to do the back area because you'd have to repeat the process of back and gently overlapping forward I think I've cleaned up my brush pretty well here. There we go. So we have our lovely sky. 
we have a solid ocean in the background. I spent a lot of time this summer on Salmon Cove Beach, so you know, if you're a skilled and you have some experience with painting, you can even paint in a little Salmon Cove rock or a little formation of rock that is in your area that's meaningful to you. But today we will focus on our sky, our water, and our beach grass and our sand. I've cleaned my brush once again. And now, move these brushes here. And now I'd like to do the underpainting of our sand. At any point as well, if you'd like to pause and work on your area, I feel that you shouldn't be rushed. I feel that you should just take your time and just pause and, you know, just play again when you're ready to do your next step. We all work at a different pace, so I'd like for you to enjoy this. And don't forget to take a moment, look at what you've painted, have a sip. and then move on to the next step. So our sand. Looking at my sand, I want it, this to appear as if I'm looking into the beach, like if we're walking into a, a, a scene. So the further away things are, they're a little more muted. So in this case, the sand would appear brighter. And as we come forward, there's a little more color in that, and that will help us achieve the depth like we're looking into our painting. So the first thing we have to do really is to create our sand color. So we have our, our colors here again. We have, we have some white and then we have this brown color here. So I'm going to take, you always start with your lighter color. I'm going to take some brown here. I'm going to mix it with my white. Try to get a nice soft sand color. And you will learn quickly when you're mixing a color that you need a lot of the light color and you very slowly mix a darker color into it. I will make this nice sand color. You want a nice amount because you want to be able to cover all your canvas. And I want the sand to appear to be a little golden So I will add a tiny bit of, we have our yellow there, to add a tiny bit of yellow to that. We've created a nice lovely color, so rather than waste it for my palette, I'm just going to Again, same brush, a little bit of water on the brush, and I'll brush it back and forth. This beautiful sandy color, our sandy beach. Oh, I picked up a little yellow, that's okay. Fell back into our whites and browns. A great underpainting for our sand. Well, a little white now, if you pick up a little more of this. So it's 
it's okay for it to marble and the color to change a little bit. So I'm just putting a little bit of water on my brush, blotting my brush. Blotting it right into the canvas there. There will be grasses and things here on the side, so but I do want to have a nice strong underpainting place for that grass to grow. And then here I'm going to soften up this little edge here, perhaps a little more white. Because our paint is wet, you're going to mix wet paint into wet paint, and you'll create your color right there on your canvas. Sure everything is covered you don't want to see any colors coming through there again we'll develop this further but this is a strong underpainting for our beach scene we have a lovely sky we've got some water we've got some sand on that beach already give the brush a rinse we're going to allow this to dry for a few moments before we add our clouds and before we start placing our grasses. So it's a great time to take just a few moments. And enjoy what you have there. Now, stage two, developing some details. So I like to switch up to my little round brush now and I want to add some clouds up here in the sky. I've allowed enough of a drying time here so it's no longer sticky. If you find that it's still wet, what you do is take a hair dryer and just gently blow dry it and what it will do, it will set the paint so that you're able to go on to the next layer. Okay, so I'll just give a little instruction first. So we're kind of going to use a brush like this. We'll do sort of these little circles and scrub it into the canvas so that we will exhaust all the paint in our brush so they'll look like little wisps of um little little wisps of paint so I'll just put some more color up there on my palette Okay, so Deb, put your brush in some water, blot it on your paper towel, load up your brush. So I'm just going to put some white paint in there and I'm going to work it into my brush right there on the canvas or right on the palette, sorry. And now we'll go right into the canvas with this. So if I represent this here, see how it kind of goes high and it sort of peters out to this long cloud. So that's a great example to use. So I don't want to go center, I'll go slightly off center near the top and just start. If you have a nice strong color of blue underneath, your cloud will really pop. You'll learn very quickly how if you have to add more paint or so I'm just gonna scrub that in there. It's okay to see some of the blue sky through there too. Reload my brush and I work it into the bristles on the brush. So I find that the top part of a cloud are very rounded, very contoured, but the bottom area of my clouds are very, not perfectly straight, but more straight. And I'm going to let this disappear right off of the canvas. I'm going to scrub, scrub this in here. And it's okay if some of that blue shows through because it kind of looks like little shadows and things. see your clouds you may need a little more white in there so um, do you see what I'm doing I'm, I'm not putting a lot of paint in my brush but I am reloading often and I'm painting these little circles scrub 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 these little circles into there reload my brush now I want this cloud to 
over here. Some of them will be a little higher, a little lower, reserving the highest part of the cloud over here. And I can always make my cloud bigger, but you can't make them smaller. So I'm just going to paint my cloud in here. If I choose to go a little larger with my cloud, I will make it larger as I go. rubbing these little edges so they kind of turn into little wispy bits. There. Scratch, scratch, grab. And then underneath the cloud, it's almost like I'm cleaning my brush again. Just to sort of soften that up there underneath. Almost straightening it, but not quite. It's sort of like I'm cleaning my brush there. A little more paint. Let's see. It's a big, strong cloud coming up there. There we go. Brush in. See that? It just looks like a, a wisp of vapor. This little cloud going right through the sky there. Mm -hmm. And once I have my cloud in there, I'm happy with it. Again, I'm going to allow that to dry when acrylic paint dries. And it doesn't matter if it's crafter's paint that you picked up at um, your local uh, craft store or if it's a higher quality uh, paint design for more experienced painters. Whatever you choose, the acrylic paint has um, usually deepens and darkens as it dries. So we might need to adjust some brightness in a little bit, but I'm going to try to work in as much of this brightness as I can now. So I'll brush that in, that's my little wispy bits. You can even, with a little tip of the brush, sort of brush in these little tiny, you know, those little clouds that just kind of hover over the horizon. They're almost like just little lines. It just gives a little interest, a little definition to your sky. And that's a big part of this painting, actually, is that cloud. So I'm also allowing, at this point, by adding these little details of white for my clouds, I'm allowing the paint to go on very thick. So I have my clouds in like that. Really like that to dry before doing anything else. So see how subtle that cloud is. And see how you can see the blues through the clouds. And you do that by just kind of scrubbing the uh, scrub, scrub, scrubbing it in there and allowing the, the roundness to appear. And then we sort of almost straighten out that little bottom edge painted in a couple of these little wisps and lines, but I want to make this cloud, like this part of the cloud right here, a little stronger. So at this point, what I will do is I will pick up some of my white paint, but this time, this is more of a detailing, so I'm just really going to load up my brush here with paint, and only on the top part, you know, closest to the, the sun, and bring out little highlights. So we paint it in there on the top part of the clouds. So you see how it just kind of makes it pop right off the canvas there. So I'm perfectly fine, perfectly okay with the paint being nice and thick when you do with the top part of these clouds just to bring out the highlights. What you have there. There we go. Bring it down a little. Tap it in there. Now, if you have a very dark blue sky, you won't need as much of that white, white, white cloud. But my sky is so gentle and so soft and summery that I need to apply that, that 
white to see. And if you have it too white and you feel that it's too bright, take a little bit of your blue and you can work some of that blue back into there if you feel that you need to take away a little bit of that white or soften it a little bit. So there we go. We feel that cloud is just blowing over the, the beach now. That warm summer air. Yeah, maybe. And at this point, we're sitting really, really close to our paintings. So what you have to do is you have to get up from your chair, you gotta step back, and you gotta see what you have to add to your painting to make it just what you want. There we go. Oh, I like that. I think it's don't overthink it. Just get some color on there. That's the splat part of the sip and splat. <laughs> These are designed just to be fun and loose. There. All right, that's a fun sky. Now the next area of interest, of course, is our uh, beach and our grass. So let's make sure that we have enough of our beach in there to allow to see it behind the, um, the grass. Just make sure I have some of my beach color and I'll work it up into this area far enough. It's okay if you see a little bit of the blue through it. It'll just look like there's water on the beach. There's that little bit of the beige color. I mean, you may already have yours up there. I just feel like I need to adjust mine just that little bit along here. That when I brush up my grass, I'll see this little bit of sand sort of behind. There, it's white. So grass here. the white and the beige. I'm sort of painting these little lines. Oop, a little more white. Almost like I'm making a little path here between. So I'll start with my darkest color and I can I can lighten that up nice and easy with my white and my beige color that I originally Created. Now, if you've got premix colors, of course, you like to blend those colors together. Yeah. I do like this whole little section here. We'll bring some beach grass over here on this side, but this one will start here and it will look like the path is just sort of disappearing into the corner. So I'm gonna put a few more brush strokes over here. I am keeping my paint in my container so I can always have the paint accessible, but I mix it here on my palette. Let's see. That's where your paint should be. You should have all your paints there on your palette ready to uh, ready to use. So right down in this corner here will be the beach. It's one of the paths. So let's kind of go from here over. Hey. So I just want to get smaller here. And it goes down on this little angle over here. So perhaps I'll pick up a little bit of my blue from earlier. I've got a little bit of a dark blue up there. A little bit of my blue from earlier. I'm just gonna sort of and mix with my a little bit of my brown. Create a little bit of a shadow color right here. And then I'll know where to place my grass. There we go. 
run all the way up to the top. Just sort of get in there. Some of the blue and a little bit of the brown. Mix. Go through the same here. So let's create this sort of shadow line here. So I'm not painting a straight line. I want to paint these lines sort of back and forth like this, but go in that general direction. See this? And this way, we will achieve like the layers of sand in there, rather than just an abrupt straight line. So that's a little bit of that darker blue mixed with our brown. down into that corner there. Darker blue, okay. And if it feels too dark, you can always add a little bit of white with that, but see how we're creating the color right there on the canvas. Not all the way up to the top, but we'll address that in just a second too. to my, just to soften it all up, a little bit of white to my brush. So what I have here, my grass will come down this way and we'll show, so we're creating the shadow now. And then on this side, it's a little straighter, but it does go to go more gradual that way. I'll just kind of exaggerate it to explain. See how the angle of my brush, how it goes down like this. And this one, it's just over a little bit in this way. So this will allow a, a patch of grass to come here and another patch of grass to come from the bottom up this way. But way out there in the background, I want to make sure now that this is lightened and I'll bring a little bit of that light down into that path. So I still have my brush here. And yeah, that's more there. So I want some more white in that lighter beige color that we mix. So again, I'm going to go along this horizon line to make create this little, little bright bit. It's white mixing with the beige. And again, sort of back and forth. So by brushing back and forth like this, there's enough in the brush, not very much, enough in the brush to give it a little highlight. So you're not taking away your brown paint, but you're, and I'm just using that chiseled edge of that big brush. There. softens it all up in there. <laughs> and don't worry about it, it's only paint. If it's not bright enough, to add a little bit of color that will make it brighter. It's over that shadow a little bit. Yeah, that's kind of like a little highlight. Oh, I can already see the path going into there. So you take your few moments and you play with your sand. And if you want to remember, you can pause your video for a little bit till you get it to this point. Now, let's work on our grasses here. So we'll switch out to our medium brush, dab it in some water. And what we do here now, we start with our darkest color. So we're gonna mix up a nice dark, dark green. Um, and we're going to brush up our green here and then we'll put some nice yellow highlights on it after. So let's start with um, some green. This is a nice dark green, but we can make it a little darker by maybe adding a little bit of brown to it. I always do this kind of on the side here. There we go. Dark, dark, dark green. And you want a little tiny bit of water, so touch it off the tissue and then you can work a little bit of water into there just so it could flow. 
So the first thing I'll do, let's start on this side, on the left hand side. And I want to think about how tall up my grass is going to go. So we need to grass you grass down and up and away. So let's do a little something like this. And you may need to reload often and work a little bit of water into that dark green. Mix a bit of brown. So when you initially start, see how it's water naturally when you paint? And then if you lift your brush up and away, and you just create this little wispy bit. So I'm not gonna go all the way up into the sky, but I'm gonna bring it up like this over the water that little bit. And I can still see some of my sandy beach through. So I wanna do the taller grass. And there's and I'm, I'm a little more careful doing these little tips first. We're going to switch out to our tiny brush a little bit for details. But this is the underpainting. So you can start with your grass tips, something like this. So you press up and away. You don't want them all in the same direction. You can pull them in different directions like the wind is sort of blowing there. It's really helpful when you have a little bit of water worked into your paint and on your brush, and I don't have a lot on my brush, there's just enough. And then down here. And I don't have just one plant source, I have multiple. I'm pulling in multiple areas, not just the one source to make it look like a palm tree. Okay. And I'll just fill it in as I go down here, and I'll be a little more mindful of this path because, let's see. Pull it out this way. You got some because they're all growing up and some of them are pulling over. See how we're going over? That's why we need to do that shadow first. So it goes behind our painting. We'll pull up a couple of these little ones. And now I'm going to fill it in like this. To make sure if your paint's going on nice and smooth and lovely perfect if it feels a little sticky work a little bit of water into your paint so it's just a little more flowing now let's get that on there and i'll allow that to dry a little bit with acrylic paint you always have your dark base and then you add your lighter colors over top and this is already instantly um changing the perspective so you're looking at the water firstly now you're looking into a scene because of the addition of this grass here so if you want to make this a little darker down there so we have black is going to be your most powerful color of all and you don't want to go too too black so i've got this dark green mix here just off to the corner here a little bit i added a ton i'll take a little bit of this green mix and i'll mix a tiny bit of black with it just to create this really dark color in this in the corner area here. See how nice and dark that is? So with the tiny bit of black and a bit of green, I want to sort of make it a little darker just in that corner. And you may have to play with it a little bit till it's dark enough. down in this corner it's nice and thick up here you can see through your grasses there. Down here. Thick, thick, thick. it's feeling sticky for me I think because it's a hot day this is what a great day to do a memories of summer recording it's absolutely beautiful right now Makes me want to go to the beach. And there. And then get that on there. Paint. It's my nice dark bits. And I'll do the same on this side. I'll do my dark bits firstly, and then we'll highlight them after. So the same process. I'm going to use our dark green. I'm 
mix up some more dark green. I'm going to mix up with a bit of my brown to get a nice deep color of green. And then I'll determine where my grass will go. So up here, perhaps it's a little, I want to leave this some of the shadow, but I'll start my painting just in over here a little bit. There, I'll paint up a couple little blades of grass. See how there's multiple sources. I'm pulling up from different spots and not just one spot. One spot would be a single plant. These grasses are multiples, multiples, multiples. And I'm just gonna keep pulling up like that along there. Some will be long, some will be short. I'll bring up some other details with a smaller brush, but this is just my little, my little round tip. So I sort of start like this and then I fill it in in between. More natural you brush, the more natural the grass will look. You need it nice and dark. In order for this to look really green, you need it really dark initially. So I got this line of grass along there, and now I'm gonna determine where it goes along this line here too. And then I could go crazy, I can just paint away. So this is my little guideline. And I may need a little water to work into that paint again. There we go. So this is my beginning. I did a little roll here. It's sort of a little shorter here and I have some taller pieces here and there. And then I made a roll kind of going down on that angle. So I know that this is where I'll, my guideline as to where to go with this. And as I did here, I'll start to fill this in. Of kind of a dark, dark color. And now I will start to fill it in. I don't want to take all that out all together, so I'm just going to come a little lower. Oh, nope, I feel I need water. If it's going on really thick and chunky, then you need to add a little water to your paint. And I'm, I'm kind of turning my brush around like this to get that little point back again. If you feel your brush is too big, switch out to a smaller brush as well. trick is to have paint on your brush. Once you have a nice amount of paint in a kit on your brush, then it will, you'll find that applying, the application will be a lot easier. So have lots of brush, a paint on your brush, have a little bit of water worked into the paint and nice and dark, okay? Try to leave a little bit of that beige peeking through there in the background. If you don't, that's okay. I'll be a little more mindful of it over, of it over here now. There, and then we're just kind of coloring in this area here, just make it really nice and dark. There. Let's fill it in once you're a little more careful. In some areas you can be a little more free in others. And I like to just describe things as I go. So I reloaded my brush and I find my paint's getting a little sticky. So I'm adding a bit of water to that. And I want to go down on this little angle like it's the path we're following here. Now, as we did with the other side, you can see right now the depth, so 
we placed in our grass, we filled it in a little bit. I could still see a little bit of the sand and things through, but that's okay, that's good. See how we deepen this with that little bit of black in our paint as well? And you can see how now it looks stronger. So we'll do the same here. We have our green, and we'll add that little bit of black to it. So let's come down here again. Very dark. We'll add our highlights to it, and this green will look fantastic. So I'm still painting in the direction of um, grass. So I'm not painting back and forth just to color in. I am very much imagining blades of grass. And every time I paint something, I add that sort of a brush stroke to it, like a blade of grass. We're sort of practicing too, even if you can't really see it very much. You're pulling up in the direction of grass. Pull a couple of blades this way. Now that corner's dark. Yeah. It is arriving. To water if you need that to make it flow. So where the shadows are the strongest is where it's going to be the darkest. So it's dark in this area here and then just along the bottom here it's dark. Ist. Darkest. Very strong and lovely. So now I'm going to add some highlights. So we started with the side, so this side is dry now and ready for these highlights. So I'm going to mix my bright yellow with a bit of my green and make that adjustment. I can switch out to my tiny little brush now. So again, with some water and my tiny little brush. Now I can make these look like little highlights and things. Oh, perhaps it would be a good time just to... brightening. Yellow as a color is a sort of a transparent color, so it's sort of see-through. If you make this nice bright green and you give these little grasses some highlights. So highlights are just that. It's mostly at the top. Whatever brush you're most comfortable with. But I'm going to use this little tiny brush here just to brush in these little yellowy bits. Especially up here in the sun. So I'm just kind of going over what I have there to sort of give highlight to what's there. And there is a nice amount of paint on my brush and I'm pressing very, very lightly. But it's okay if I create a brand new brush stroke there as well. 
because there are layers and layers and layers and layers of grass. And as every time I load up my brush as well, I twist it and turn it to maintain the nice pointy tip because it's the pointy tip of the brush that allows the grass to look like grass. So if I wanted to make this one longer, for instance, I could come up here and just sort of pull up from what's already there. Make it a little longer right up into that skyline. See that? That's tall, tall grass. And then to make this look a little more grass, I'm just going to pull down a few of these little lines like that. I don't want to cover it in. I just want to put a couple of brush strokes in there. That's going to make me think of grass. There. Oh, that's fun. So I'm going to do the same over here on this side. So we got this bright yellow. We mix it a little bit with the green so you have a really nice bright color. It's a bit sticky and I'll give it a little, dip your brush in a little bit of water to make it flow. But you do need brush paint on your brush in order for this to, to spread and to little highlights. You're not going to mess it up. It's only paint. We've gotten this far. We'll go all the way. These little highlighty bits. Yeah, some of those are really high. And you know, all paintings look really great when you're sitting back six or eight feet. And the same thing applies to you who watching me paint this. It may look like it's all coming together. Oh wow, that looks great. But I'm going to do a little, I'm going to take the painting and come in nice and close up so that you get the real idea of what these paintings look like close up. They look different close up than they do further back. So you just get those highlights on there, get your grass in there. If you have too much yellow, you can always go back in with your green and make those little lines a bit smaller. There we go. There we go. So I'm going to put some shorter strokes in there. Look at that. And as it gets closer, these could be longer again. little bit and see what you have there. Now I'm going to bring this in nice and close so that you can see that these brush strokes are not perfect but when you hold it back at a difference at a distance then they look much better. See it's just loose little strokes in there. Loose little strokes but when you hold it back it looks so much better. So we'll let this dry and then we'll bring in some more details. So let's bring out some of these details. So on this side, we've lost a little bit of our shadow, but that's okay. We'll bring those back now. So our initial color, our sand color, and a little bit of that white. So the original sand color was that, those beige and white. And there's a tiny bit of that blue kind of worked in there. So let's try to match that up. You don't want it to be too strong, but it's mostly beige with a tiny, tiny little bits of other color into there. So let's work some of that in there. And the other thing we're going to do now, now you can see, sort of see the, the grass. We'll just sort of tap, 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 make it like little sandy bits. Sandy bits of brown. Let 
what I'm gonna do in here, just letting the sound, sand kind of mound up around that grass a little bit. And work that shadow in there. Mm -hmm. There we go, so I create the perfect little mix of the brown, a little tiny bit of the blue, and I say tiny because that's all it is, just a tiny, tiny bit. And then I'll go back and forth over our top. And you should still have that color there on your palette, so kind of draw it from there. There we go. So I'm happy with that. And then a little tiny bit around the grass, and it's going to tiny it. Tap it in so it almost looks like a little tiny mound of sand. <laughs> and if you didn't lose your shadow, your shadow's still there. Perfect. If you took it out all together, look, you can even brush it right in over. Acrylic paint is awesome. Right over the other little bits. I lost a little bit of my path here, so look, by bringing this little gray brown mix, I can add it into there. Okay. So that's my path. Now I want to brighten up my grass a little bit more. So I'm going to take some of that bright yellow. Some of that bright yellow. Look. Really nail some of that grass with the bright yellow. They have to be everywhere, but just brush it right up there on the top, just like that. So this, these are the final details we're adding here now. But there's some little tiny areas that I want to brighten up. And I'm not making this perfect, not at all. I'll get in close here now, just so you can see just what I'm doing here do this for you. Okay, so let me bring it in close there. You see this? I take my paint brush and this is just some of the bright, bright yellow. You know, just kiss the canvas. Okay, look how much brighter that looks than the other side. So we'll do the same with just a little bit of yellow here. We'll do the same here. So I'm going to load up this brush. I like to come in nice and close so you can see what I'm doing here. Just finishing this baby off. Here we go. See? Just a couple little bright bits. Maybe I'll brighten that up a little bit. It's just a nice thick. It's almost like I'm cleaning my brush right there on the right there on the canvas. So you can see up close how that looks. I'm just laying it in there. And that one, see how, like if it's a little thick in some areas, it just sort of looks like plants. But when you come back at a distance and you view it, it just has this magical little look to it. So anywhere, step back from it. Anywhere you feel that you have to make any adjustments, this is your time to do it. So I feel my adjustments need to be made here in my grass and just a little bit, just enough. I adjusted my little bit of shadow there. You may or may not. If you want your cloud a little brighter, you can, you know, work that into your cloud. I'm gonna look at this little shoreline here now. I'm gonna really make sure my brush is clean. Now this is my medium brush. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of white, maybe a little bit of the sandy color too, but let me start with the white. And just along the shoreline, oh yeah, I like that, okay. Just along the shoreline, I'm just gonna wiggle a little bit of white in there. And maybe that's a few little waves breaking. Okay, and again, I'll bring it in nice and close for you so you can see that I'm sort of, it's sort of straight lines across, but I'm sort of breaking up that line a little bit. And maybe, Maybe that'll come up into here that little bit. As I come forward, I'm just kind of cleaning my brush, really. Barely touching the canvas. Mm -hmm. There we 
brighten up the path. I didn't put any more paint in my brush. I used the full strength back here, but down through here now, I'm just gonna, it's almost like I'm cl gently cleaning my brush. I'm not putting any pressure on there. Just sort of like a little dry brush. Again, I'll come in nice and close so you can see, okay. See that little tiny scribble there just along the shoreline and a few little lines this way and I just kind of rubbed it into the, the sand to make it pop. Yeah. Very rarely do you go to the beach and not see seagulls. So I'll take my little tiny detail brush and my black and I'm gonna make the tiniest little seagulls back there in the sky. It's, it's I just so happen to drop a little bit of paint right there. So I'm gonna turn that into a seagull. So like a big long V like that. There. So that could be one little seagull for me. I, I'm always a three seagull, a seagull girl. <laughs> This one here in that direction and maybe I'll have a little teeny tiny one back there I find if you try to make them tiny they're always going to appear a little larger than you expect anyway so I've got a couple seagulls there I mean, you can fill your sky if you like so we'll start with the black and then I'll take a little bit of white and just put a tiny little bit of a highlight on there let me bring it in close so that you can see and maybe maybe just a tiny highlight and this will also make them appear a little smaller sometimes we accidentally paint crows instead of seagulls but you know little highlight a little highlight just kind of soften it and last but not least I love to sign my name in red you can sign your name in any color you like. Um, I feel there's a good area here or here to sign your name. A little bit of water will help it flow. If you have a dark background, you want something nice and bright for it to pop. So. Let's see. And this sometimes takes a bit of practice. what I have room for here. <laughs> there you go. Always make sure when you sign your name to leave at least a finger distance from the end and the bottom because if you choose to decide to um, frame your work, then you have to have room for that beautiful frame to go around your masterpiece. <laughs> And voila there we have it folks memories of summer sip and sweat What an awesome paint night. I'm already seeing lots of people's final product. Post it online with the hashtag your future starts here. Please make sure to tune in tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. for presentations on mental health services and a quick chat about our 10,000 coffees program. Don't forget, tomorrow night is the grand finale with comedian Matt Wright. We'll see you tomorrow.